Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the mini MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I will be walking you through today's practice problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Paper chromatography is a topic that causes confusion for a lot of students. And I think the reason is that a lot of textbooks teach it in a very complicated manner when it is a really simple topic. Basically, you just need to keep in mind that there are three different elements at play. There's the solvent, there's the paper, and there's the substance of interest. Okay, so let's walk through each of those. And once we do, I think it'll make a lot of sense how this experiment works. First of all, we're gonna take a container and we're gonna put some solvent in it. And we call this solvent the mobile phase. This mobile phase could be anything, but typically, we make it a nonpolar substance. Next, let's talk about the paper. The paper is called the stationary phase because it doesn't move during the experiment. And the paper is typically something that's polar, such as silicone. Finally, we have our substances of interest. They're pictured here as these colored dots. Originally, at the beginning of the experiment, these dots are placed close to the solvent. And as the experiment goes on, and the solvent travels upward, it drags the substances along with it. If the substances are attracted to the solvent front, then they will travel farther. For instance, if the solvent front is nonpolar, they will travel farther because they're attracted to that solvent front. Also, if the substances are very attracted to the paper, the stationary phase, they also don't want to move very much. Think about it, it's like being very attracted to a very comfortable couch. If that couch is very comfortable, you don't want to leave. So if these substances are very attracted to that stationary phase, they just want to stay put. They don't want to move with the solvent front. And typically the paper is, not, is polar, right? Like silicone. Therefore, typically polar substances will not travel as far. Keep in mind that the solvent could be polar, and the paper could be nonpolar. It's just that typically when we do these experiments, we're dealing with a solvent that's nonpolar and a paper that's polar. So why do we do this experiment? Because it allows us to separate and identify substances based on their polarity. With that simple understanding of paper chromatography in mind, you should be well prepared to handle this question. A spot will move farther in paper chromatography if C, it is more attracted to the mobile phase. As in our example, if the mobile phase is nonpolar and the substance of interest is nonpolar, it will want to travel further to stay closer to that mobile phase. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you are really looking to maximize your MCAT score, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I would love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAS score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll see you next time.